है да хорошо Well, uh, last uh, time uh, I have written several useful uh, short exact sequences, and uh, uh, today we are, go we are going to prove them. Uh, uh, and we start with one more useful exact sequence, uh, which is uh, which can be considered as a generalization of the capping exact sequence. I recall that capping is exact sequence when we replace a boundary component with a puncture, or in other words, we uh, attach a one puncture disk to a boundary component. Uh, actually, there is a more general situation a more general situation is like that. Uh, suppose that we have a surface, oh, a, a, a surface S prime, uh, which is as usual a surface of finite type, a compact surface of genus G with uh, finitely many boundary components, and after that we get, we delete finitely many punctures. And suppose that we have here a closed subsurface, closed in the sense of topology of S prime. Uh, this in fact means the following that, uh, well, let, 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 let us draw some picture. What, what is allowed and what is prohibited. So S prime itself, had several handles, several punctures, and several boundary components. When we uh, consider S prime, uh, well, it is not allowed to replace, to, to add new puncture. If we add new puncture, this is, if we remove this point from S prime and S has one more puncture, then S is not a closed subset. So it is some closed subset, which is again a surface, for instance, something like that. Uh, uh, well, 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 yes, in this situation, uh, the part of surface which is bounded by, which, which is destined, which is bounded, bounded by these two curves, uh, is a closed subsurface of S prime. Well, and of course, if we have a closed subsurface, then we have a homomorphism of mapping class groups. Note that closedness is important here, even just, just to have a homomorphism. The matter is that if we have a closed subsurface, then by our uh, initial definition, the mapping class group consists of homeomorphisms that fix boundary pointwise. And this homomorphism is just extended by identity. Extended by the identity. And we have no possibility to extend by the identity uh, if the surface is not closed. For instance, well, if this is a surface S prime, we could consider an open surface bounded by this, uh, by this uh, uh, curve gamma. Uh, well, there is a closed subsurface bounded by this curve gamma. We may include gamma in this subsurface. Then it is okay, and we have um, 
extended by the identity uh, homomorphism. But if we consider, if we take for S an open sub subsurface bounded by gamma, then there is no good homomorphism from uh, the mapping class group of S to the mapping class group of S primes. Th the matter is that uh, homomorphism of S can behave very badly in the neighborhood of this gamma, and we have no possibility to extend them through gamma. So this is not our case. Our case is closed subsurface, and then there is no problem with this homomorphism. Of course, uh, we cannot, a priori, we cannot say anything about uh, the fact if this eta, eta is surjective or not. If we take a surface S prime of rather big genera, genus and then take some small subsurface S of rather small genus, obviously eta can be not surjective, but sometimes it's, it is surjective. We can say anything about that, but we can say mm, something about the kernel of eta, about how far eta from being injective. And the theorem is the following. We need two assumptions. So first of all, S is closed subsurface, as I have already explained. And also we have two assumptions. First of all, S is not homeomorphic to an annulus. Annulus is a, a special case and we do not want to consider it uh, now. And second, uh, no connected component um, of S prime with S removed is an open disk. So, okay, okay, if we have a, sur a surface, we could obtain a closed subsurface just by removing an open disk. Well, all, 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 all outside this disk is a closed subsurface, but uh, this type of, uh, um, of closed subsurfaces is not allowed we require that no connected component of the uh, complement is an open disk. Okay, if these two property assumptions uh, are satisfied, then the claim of the theorem is that we have the following um, the following exact sequence. I write, write it down and then I explain the notation. Mm. Well, uh, f f first, first of all, this is the uh, usual, usual uh, short exact sequence is one, something, 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 and then again one. Here we do not have right one. Uh, we do not know anything about how far eta is from being surjective. We only explain how far is it from being injective. And now I would like to explain what is these alphas, betas, and gammas. The, Situation is as follows. We need, we know that no component of S prime without S is an open disk, but we need to look on two other types of components. First of all, we need to look on, consider all components of S prime without S uh, that are homeomorphic to a one punctured open disk. Uh, 
well it 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 is not allowed to be just an open disk disk but it is allowed uh, to be a one punctured open disk so it is it is allowed that there was a puncture in s prime and now we have a boundary component this is exactly the situation of capping so here we mean that S is outside this one punctured disk. So this is allowed. And in this situation, suppose that we have M such situations and alpha I's are these boundary components of these one punctured disks. And another, another type of connected components of S prime without S is let us look on all components of S prime without S that are homeomorphic to, to an open annulus. Uh, well, <laughs> look, <laughs> actually, I'm, it is not a very good uh, formulation. Uh, Look, uh, certainly one punctured open disk is the same as open annulus. It is just uh, both are homeomorphic to two punctured spheres. But I mean the following that uh, uh, here I mean that one puncture of this disk is uh, obtained. Uh, well, here in the first case, I mean that one puncture. Uh, comes from a puncture in S prime uh, and the other uh, from a, a, a boundary component from a boundary component of S. And here we mean that both uh, punctures come from boundary components of S. So in fact, we, we just mean oh, these cases A and B just, in fact, we need to look on all connected components of S without S prime that are homeomorphic to two punctured spheres. And there are two types of such com connected components. They may come from a puncture of S prime, which is replaced by a boundary component, but they also may come from the following situation that we have two boundary components of S which are isotopic in S prime, so they together bound, this is an open annulus. Well, in this situation, suppose that we have M such, M situation of the first type and N situation of the second type. And in this situation, we denote these boundary components by beta I and gamma I. And these are exactly all the curves that, uh, that uh, participate in our uh, claim. So the claim is that we need to take all then twists about curves like alphas that uh, about new boundary components that replace punctures and we need to take all then twists about curves beta and curves gamma and consider such elements. Well, and this is not uh, to finish the um, formulation of the theorem. Besides, we also know that these elements 
then then twists about all these uh, look all these alpha alphas betas and gammas all of them are boundary components of s hence the then twists about them of course commute but it turns out that there are no other relations mm -hmm. among these m plus n elements and this means that this group is isomorphic to a free rank m plus n abelian group okay so this is the claim of the theorem in particular if s is a subsurface of s prime and no s is not an annulus and no connected component of s prime uh, without s is an open disk no connected component is a one puncture disk and no connected component is an annulus then then just uh, we see that eta is injective so if 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 there are no curves here then it is injective in particular okay so let us prove this theorem Uh, when we prove it, we are immediately obtain, uh, maybe before proving it, uh, let us understand that the captain exact sequence, sequence follows immediately. Why? Well, the captain exact sequence is just the case when uh, we have a curve S prime, we have the surface S prime, we have punctures, boundary components, and S is obtained from S prime just by uh, uh, S prime is attached from, by, from S just by attaching this uh, by capping one boundary component by attaching. Uh, this uh, one puncture disk. So in this case, we just have one curves of type alpha and no curves of type beta and gamma and the uh, short exact sequence in the formulation uh, takes the form One moment. The short exact sequence uh, takes uh, the, the form like that. But we also know that in this particular case, eta is surjective. Uh, we, we have discussed last time that any homeomorphism um, preserving a point can be by an isotopy made to preserve to fix uh, a disk point wise and uh, this is somewhat like a strong version of the jordan theory so the, the this part uh, doesn't come from uh, from this uh, fr from this theorem so this is additional part only for for the case of k but all other is just in, in the the, 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 this inclusion, this this sequence is called inclusion the, the inclusion sequence. Okay, now let us prove this here. First of all, first of all, uh, what is what is what we actually know? Uh, if we look on this situation then um, we actually know the following first of all we know that it is obvious that this composite homomorphism is zero so uh, we need to prove that the sequence is exact this means that the kernel of eta exactly um, coincide with this subgroup 
generated by dent twists. Uh, but at least we know that all these dent twists lie in the kernel of eta. Indeed, look, the, in the first situation, the dent twist about alpha in the mapping class group of S prime becomes the dent twist about an inessential curve. In S prime, this alpha i is inessential. It is essential in S. In S, it is uh, the boundary component, but in S prime, it becomes inessential since uh, it can, can be taken to an neighborhood of a puncture by an isotopy. So uh, this dent twist is trivial. Uh, and here again, beta i and gamma i are not isotopic to each other in S, but they are isotopic to each, to, to each other in S prime. This the just this annulus provides an isotopy. So again, this uh, the dent the, the dent with t, t beta a i and t gamma i are different in this group, but they are coincide to each other in that group, in, in, in the mapping class group of S prime. Hence, they go to, to well, to, to go, uh, it is better to say that they go to one, not to zero, you know, since the, the, the groups are uh, not co commutative. Okay, and another thing which, are all, which we already know is that, um, is this isomorphism. The matter is we have already proved when we discussed uh, when we discussed uh, Fenthill Nielsen coordinates. This was uh, maybe two two months ago. Uh, that uh, if we have several simple closed curves, which are all essential, pairwise uh, non-isotopic and pairwise disjoint then the dent twist about them generate a, generate a free abelian group. Here is exactly the situation when we need that our surface is not an annulus. Uh, well, yes, uh, I, I forget to say that, okay, this S is connected. Uh, both of them are connected. Uh, S is not an angulus exactly means that no two boundary components of S are isotopic to each other. So all these curves, alpha I's, beta I's and gamma I's are pairwise non-isotopic, pairwise disjoint. And hence we in fact know that um, all of them, all these, M plus two N curves uh, generate a free abelian subgroup. So there are no uh, relations among them, uh, except for co co commutativeness. Uh, and hence, uh, these M plus N elements also generate uh, the free abelian subgroup. Well, so the only thing we need to prove is that the kernel of eta is actually does coincide with this subgroup. We know that this kernel contains this subgroup and the only thing we need to prove that this kernel of eta actually coincide with the subgroup. And well, let us prove this. Mm. Well, suppose that, that some mapping class F uh, belongs to the kernel of eta. So one, once more, eta is uh, the mapping from mapping class group of S to the mapping class group of S prime. And this is extended by the identity. Mm -hmm. Suppose we have a homeomorphism which belongs to the kernel. I, I would like uh, a mapping class which belongs to the kernel. My goal is to write this homeomorphism as 
from uh, these m plus n elements in the formulation of the theorem. Well, first of all, we once this f lies in the kernel, uh, no, or Okay, so I represent uh, this mapping class group F by a homeomorphism. We always may represent mapping class by an orientation preserving homeomorphism of the surface that fixes the boundary pointwise. And let phi prime be the homeomorphism of S prime, which is obtained uh, extended by extending phi by the identity. So phi, phi prime coincides with phi on S and, uh, and we extend it by the identity. Okay. And now, now suppose that consider an arbitrary simple closed curve in S. So uh, I draw some schematic picture. So I don't want to draw anything difficult, just uh, as, uh, well, this is S prime. And S this is like that, for instance. Okay, okay, this is just, and we consider any simple closed curve. For instance, like that. Any simple closed curve in S. Uh, look, we know that since f is lies in the kernel of eta this means that this phi prime is uh, trivial in the mapping class group so phi prime is isotopic to the identity homeomorphism of s prime in the isotopic modular the boundary. Well, what does it mean? This means that if we consider phi prime of delta, this one is delta, then uh, this new curve is isotopic to delta in S prime. Uh, we, we need to, uh, there is difference between isotopy in S and in S prime, let, let us be careful about that. So uh, since, well, okay, okay, this is trivial. If we have a homeomorphism isotopic to the identity, then of course it takes any uh, simple closed curve to a simple closed curve isotopic to it. Uh, well, but this means, but look, okay, we cannot replace this as prime by S immediately, but we can replace this one with phi of delta. Phi prime is just extended this phi by the identity on the complement, but delta is contained in S, it is not in the complement. So it is, there is no difference between phi of delta and phi prime of delta. So I will write phi of delta further. Okay, my goal is to understand that in fact, the same is true in S, not in S prime. But let us do it step by step. First of all, we know that this means uh, that the geometric intersection number of delta and phi of delta is zero. Okay, mm. 
let us understand. Uh, uh, is it important, is it <laughs> good to write like that? Actually, it is not very good. Uh, let us let us be uh, careful, and uh, I would like to specify that it is in S prime. Uh, the matter is okay if we consider just two curves and uh, count their number of intersections. Then, of course, it is not important where we count this number. But when we consider these curves up to isotopy, then uh, the result a priori may be different. Uh, indeed, it is possible that, for instance, delta and phi of delta can be made disjoint by an isotopy in S prime, but can be made disjoint by an isotopy in S. So a priori, we need to specify this, that it is in S prime. Uh, but now look, uh, I claim that it follows that the same is true in S. Uh, let, let, let us un, uh, prove this implication. Assume the converse. Suppose that delta and phi of delta are the intersection number, geometric intersection number is non-zero in S. This means then, uh, well, assume that this intersection number is non-zero in S. So we cannot make delta and phi of delta disjoint by an isotopy in S. But then, then uh, put delta and phi of delta in minimal position in S. Well, okay, we, we see something like that. They are there in minimal position. Oh, sorry. We did they're simple. Okay, the, the, I mean that uh, we, we have some topology here. So these are, uh, we have some handles and so on. And so this is a minimal position. Look, but we know that in S prime, uh, so, I, with with some abuse of notation, I write down here delta and phi of delta. Well, but uh, I mean that, uh, mm, uh, okay, these are curves as a topic to them when we put them to a minimal position. Well, maybe, maybe I write some mm, uh, tildes here. So the, the, these are not the initial curves, the initial curves delta and phi of delta, uh, may maybe not in minimal position, but we may put them in minimal position. So, so delta and uh, delta tilde and five delta tilde is what we obtain after putting these curves in the minimal position. But look, if we look on these two curves, delta tilde and five delta tilde are not in minimal position in S prime. So they are in minimal position in S, but they are not in minimal position in S prime. Uh, indeed, we know that in S prime, their intersection index is zero. So they cannot be in minimal position uh, if they have at least one intersection point. So they have at least one intersection point, so they are not in minimal position in S prime. Hence, there is a bygone, a bygone. And moreover, uh, I would like, as usual, I would like to consider an innermost bygone. So,
so we have the situation like that. We have this bygone two arcs which bound a disk. This is a disk in S prime. Uh, okay. And uh, this disk doesn't intersect, intersect with the delta tilde and phi of delta tilde any, anymore. Well, but look, uh, delta tilde and phi of delta tilde are contained in S, but this disk Is not, it is not contained in S. If it were contained in S, then we would have a bygone in S. So if this disk were contained in S, then we would have a bygone in S, but we do not have a bygone in S uh, as we assumed that uh, our curves are in minimal position in S. So, well, I'm sorry, here, this is S, not this part. Uh, so we see that, well, and what, what, what do we see here? That this disk is not contained in S, but its boundary is contained in S. But then of course, then of course the situation is like that. that we have some holes here. And then S without S prime has a component homeomorphic to an open disk. And this is not allowed by our by uh, the hypothesis of, of the theorem. Uh, this one was one of our assumptions. So, so we see that uh, well, this is not true, and we actually have we have proved this. We have proved this. So we actually have that uh, see that the intersection index uh, between delta and phi of delta in S is zero. Uh, but, okay, what does it mean? This means that by an isotopy that can be made disjoint. Look on the corresponding picture. This delta And phi of delta mm. these delta and phi of delta, they are mm, disjoint. They can be made disjoint. So again, up to isotopy, they can be made disjoint. But we, we see that this delta tilde and phi of delta tilde. So they first, they are disjoint. And second, we know that they are isotopic in S prime. This is what we have started from. We have discussed this maybe on the first lecture or, or on the second, I have not remembered this exactly, that these two conditions are true only when delta, delta tilde and phi of delta tilde bound uh, an annulus in S prime. So in uh, first, first of all, 
they need to bound the subsurface, they need to separate as, as prime. And second, uh, they, so uh, of, of course, they need to be homologous in S prime. Once they are isotopic, they at least need to be homologous. So they need to separate S prime. And if both um, connected components are not angular, then these curves cannot be isotopic. So they need to bound an angulus in S prime. Well, uh, so now we need to think about whether this annulus is contained in S or not. So we have uh, we have two possibilities. Mm. Well, look. So we have in S prime. In S prime, we have the situation like like that: delta tilde and phi of delta tilde. A bound and annulus. And here is something else. Okay. Uh, but here is just, just usual cylinder, usual annulus, no, nothing else. We have two possibilities. First of them is, and we know that this delta tilde and phi of delta tilde lie in, they both are contained in S, but a priori, we do not know whether the cylinder between them is contained in S. But uh, look, once we know that, so we know that this delta and delta, th these two curves are contained in S. And we know that no connected component of S mm, uh, without S prime is hemiomorphic to an open disk. So look, if there is a path con connecting these two curves, which is con contained in S, then the whole cylinder must be contained in S. Otherwise we have here some hole, which is, uh, uh, which is, uh, hemiomorphic to an open disk. So we have only two possibilities here. First possibility, well, sorry, two possibilities. First, it may happen that, well, let A be this annulus. A is, com or, uh, is contained in S and then delta tilde is isomorphic to phi of delta tilde. Now, not only in S prime, but in S, and hence delta is isomorphic to phi of delta again in S. And, and actually this is what we locally want. At the moment, uh, I haven't said this, but my, my goal, my local goal was to prove that for any simple closed curve in S, phi of delta is isotopic to delta in S. We, we have from the very beginning that it is isotopic to delta in S prime, but now we arrive to the fact that it is isotopic to phi of delta in S. But we, we have another possibility and we need to handle it. The possibility is that uh, the situation is like that. Delta tilde and phi of delta tilde are isotopic to the boundary component of S, to the boundary components, different boundary components of S, and the cylinder between them is not in S. But th this is the only possibility when the cylinder is not in S and no, no connected component of S without S prime is a, a disk. Well, so another possibility is that delta and phi of delta, delta tilde and phi of delta tilde are isotopic in S to, 
two boundary components to two different boundary components of S. And then, of course, delta and phi of delta are also isotopic in S to two different boundary components of S. Well, okay, but this is impossible. Look, uh, we know that F if I stabilizes the boundary of S pointwise, this means that if delta is isotopic to the boundary component, then phi of delta is isotopic to delta. So then delta is isotopic to phi of delta. First of all, this is again what we what we initially wanted but actually uh, this is not this is not too possible uh, since this implies that two boundary components uh, of s are isotopic to each other in s uh, which is impossible since uh, impossible since uh, S is not a cylinder, is not an animus. Again, by the assumption of the theorem. So we, we, we are never in this case. We are always, this case is not allowed. And we are always in the case uh, one, and we understand that delta is isomorphic to phi of delta. Well, so what we see, uh, we see that finally, finally we have understood, understood the following, that for each simple closed curve delta in S, phi of delta is isotopic to delta in S. Okay, now, well, our goal, our goal is to prove that, uh, okay, this phi is not exactly uh, tr tr trivial, but it lies in some, in some subgroup generated by special dent twists. Well, where, where is it? Well, well it is like that. Our goal is to prove that the mapping class of phi lies in this subgroup. Uh, we understood, we have understood that phi acts trivially all on uh, up to isotopy. It takes any curve to, um, to an isotopic curve. Now we are going to apply uh, uh, Alexander's method. Uh, what uh, uh, I recall that uh, when we applied Alexander's method, uh, we uh, proceed as follows. We take our, we take our surface now I, now I now I would like to draw this is surface s this is not a sprint this is s it has several boundary components several uh, handles and several punctures we may found uh, let us find uh, simple closed curves which our, it, it would be nice to find a simple closed curve that fill the surface, that decomposes with several times we have used this technique, that we find uh, simple closed curves that altogether decompose the surface into 
um, disks and one function disks. But uh, I would like to recall that in case our surface was with boundary, we could not find curves with this property. We have to work with arcs. Uh, now I don't want to work with arcs. The matter is that this our argument about this simple closed curve delta it doesn't work for arc uh, for arcs at all. So the the same uh, assertion for arcs is incorrect. So I don't want to deal with arcs, but then I cannot achieve that all boundary components are disks, but I can achieve disks or one puncture disks, but I can achieve the following. Uh, let us proceed. I would like to consider the following curves. First of all, I would like that our, this simple closed curve satisfy conditions in Alexander's method. So we have no triple intersections. We have, uh, we have no a triple of these curves that such that any two of, of these three intersect. Okay, and second, I would like, actually I choose these curves like that. Uh, well, uh, here I, uh, he, he, here the same, just uh, not so easy to draw it. Uh, okay. So here we have curves like that. Here, uh, uh, then they go like that. Then uh, here we start proceeding like that. Mm. Okay. Mm. Okay. And look, this is not uh, these curves do not fill the surface. Uh, I consider the curves as they are uh, uh, just as, as, as they are these particular curves. They do not fill the surface. The matter is that there are connected components which are one puncture disks. This is okay. There are connected components which are just disks. But there are connected components which are isomorphic, uh, which are uh, uh, okay. Uh, the one bunch of open disks, yes. And here, or again, open disks, connected component of the component. But this one is not a one bunch of open disk. This is homeomorphic. Mm. A one punctured closed disk, and this is not allowed. Uh, so, uh, it, instead of this uh, uh, right thing, we get a puncture. But here we have a boundary component. So in this situation, this is not the case, which is called. We, we do not say that we cannot say that uh, this. Um, in this situation, uh, the curves fill. The surface, but it, uh, the Alexander method can still be applied. Uh, look, first of all, we say that uh, we have a homeomorphism phi, and this homeomorphism takes every simple closed curve to a simple closed curve as a topic to it. So the Alexander method says us that phi is isotopic to another homomorphism psi that fixes all these red curves point-wise. So we may always replace the homeomorphism phi by a homeomorphism psi in the same mapping class 
so that this psi fixes all red curves pointwise. Now, as in the standard Alexander method, we know that if the component is either, so uh, let, let gamma be the union of all these red curves. Uh, if the component Uh, a component of S without gamma is either an open disk or a one punctured open disk, then, then uh, we again can, by further isotopy, isotopy, we may achieve that psi uh, fixes this component point-wise. So if we have a homeomorphism of a disk onto itself, which is trivial on the boundary of this disk, then we can always by an isotopy make this homeomorphism trivial on the whole disk. And the same for one puncture disk. But we need to be more careful with these components. These components, okay, if we uh, take the closure of this component, then it is just the closed annulus. The closure of this component is the closed annulus. And we know that Psi fixes both. Uh, both uh, uh, boundary components of this closed annulus, both boundary components of this closed annulus point-wise. So we see here an element of the mapping class group. What can we say about the mapping class group of genus zero surface with one with two boundary components. So th th this is the, the closed a closed annulus. We have discussed this again on one of the first lectures that this is Z and this is Z generated by uh, the then twist about a curve like that. So if this one is, well, okay, epsilon, then this is Z generated by epsilon. So we see that our psi, our psi in any of these, uh, uh, of these components, psi can be non-trivial, but it is always, if, if epsilon one, epsilon two, epsilon k are the boundary components of uh, S, then the psi in every of these uh, components is some power of, of the corresponding epsilon i. So we arrive to the following, and psi in all other components is trivial. And so we see that psi is some product of powers of the dentists about epsilon i's. So psi and psi, uh, now I would like to write uh, an equality on the level of mapping classes. So I replace psi, but it's mapping class F and we see that it, it is the pro, a product of some powers. Oh, well, let us use another letter here of some powers Uh, of the dent twists about the boundary components. But now, now we know that the dent twists about, now we know that again, we, we would like to use once more that F of F equals to one. We know that in, in S prime, 
the then twists about non-isotopic disjoint simple coast curve satisfy no relations. So the only relation uh, bet relations between, so we know that this goes to one in, in S prime. So the only relation that may occur are that some two of these components are, uh, one of these components become inessential in S prime or uh, some two of them become isotopic in S prime. And these are exactly our required elements. Well, so first, uh, 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 so we have finished the proof and the, the proof uh, comes by the following line. First, we take the element, an element in the kernel. And first we understand that it is a product of then twists about all boundary components of S, but then we understand that the only possibility for such twist to be trivial in S prime, to be uh, the product of, of then twists about boundary components that become inessential in S prime. And those in the, the products of such things about pairs of boundary components that become isotopic to each other in S prime. Okay, so we have proved this uh, inclusion sequence and as a corollary, we obtain the capping exact sequence, which would be important for us. Uh, and uh, well, now, Well, the, 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 the next, uh, the next uh, what we would like to prove is that, well, sorry. Well, where is the end? Well, so next is we would like to prove the Birma exact sequence. Well, um, the, I recall this, this exact sequence is the following. Uh, we have a surface we have a surface S, which can have several boundary components, several some genus and several punctures. And we prefer, we add additional puncture and we prefer to think about not a puncture, but we would prefer to think of it as of a marked point. But from the point of uh, view of the mapping class group, there is no differ, differ, difference between punctures and mapping class groups, but still we would like to now for us, it is important that these are punctures and the additional is marked point. And in particular, we, we consider a mapping class group that doesn't mix these marked points with punctures. And uh, the mapping, the sequence is as follows, that we would like to take the fundamental group of the surface S, we would like to take this portion along the uh, along a, a curve. We, if we have uh, some loop, then we can uh, we can take this point and push it along this loop, and uh, we obtain a mapping class of S together with mark point P and we obtain this one. And this is the required exact sequence. And I just would like to recall that still we have no, this push is still not 
well defined. We have already we haven't proved that this is a well defined home market, and this is also one of our goals. We we will prove pyramid exact sequence together with proving that this push is well defined. We have I have explained how to ob obtain this push. Just we take this p and uh, uh, make it travel along a loop, uh, but. Uh, I haven't explained why this is well defined. Well, now it's time to make a 10 minute break. And so we resume in 10 minutes. And improve this. Well, let's proceed with proven uh, the German exact sequence. Uh, uh, this uh, proof relies on a harder result, which we, which we have not proved, but uh, moduli it is easier. Uh, and the main idea is to consider the following uh, fiber bundle. Look, we may consider all homeomorphisms of the surface S modular its boundary without thinking about point P at all. So we this group doesn't know, this is a topological group. We, uh, it, uh, we endow it with usual compact open topology, uh, uh, which is usual for uh, uh, spaces of maps and uh, this is the topological group, and uh, we uh, yes. And one moment. It is important that this Bierman exact sequence it works only if the Euler characteristic of the surface is negative. Uh, this group, uh, this topological group, and what we know about this group. Uh, we know, though, though we have not proved it, uh, initially I promised that maybe in this uh, um, course we will prove this fact, but uh, actually uh, I have no time. And, uh, uh, but we know that this group is contractible. Uh, no, no, so sorry. Uh, no, no. Uh, not contractible, it has contractible connected components. Uh, th this is a deep result, but um, unfortunately we have uh, no, uh, uh, we have no time to prove it. Um, maybe, maybe even I will try this to do this. Uh, no, uh, in, in the next lectures, but uh, most probably we have not, not enough time. Well, but still we will use this fact now, but now, well, we may, there is a natural map from this group uh, to the surface, but not to the whole surface, but to the surface without with boundary removed. Uh, okay, mm. we just uh, send any homeomorphism to its value at point P. So this is just evaluation of the home homeomorphism at point P. Uh, we take any homeomorphism to the value of at point P. Well, and what is Look, and the pre-image of, of the point P below, there is one special point here, it's P itself. And the pre-image is the uh, homeomorphisms of S, sending P to itself and stabilizing the boundary. Well, and the claim, the claim, Uh, 
this is a fiber bundle. Так, несколько слов на русском. Значит, на русские разные виды расслоений довольно сложно переводится. Там немножко другая терминология. Fiber bundle – это локально тривиальное расслоение. Well, let us prove that this is a fiber bundle. Actually, we, we just, we just uh, uh, can uh, prove this uh, by definition. So we um, consider and let us consider an, uh, a small open set in the surface S. This is U. Uh, U is a small open set. And uh, uh, I would like to uh, construct uh, to, uh, to show that the uh, free image let let here be some point q so u is a small neighborhood of some point q not necessarily of this point p but uh, and my goal is to show that the pre image of q the pre image of q uh, under this uh, projection pi uh, is uh, the pre image of u the pre image of u uh, is homeomorphic uh, to u times the preimage of q, and this this homeomorphism is compatible with uh, uh, projection uh, to the first um, multiple. And this is exactly exactly what we mean about under fiber bundle. Well, let us prove this. Uh, first of all, uh, let us consider. We may assume that this U is a small disk, and uh, we may um, we may. Um, introduce some um, coordinate and actually let us start with considering a small disk just in r2 uh, i claim that i claim that uh, Uh, consider, consider this small disk with the center at zero, and uh, I claim that for each point here x, uh, which is inside the disk, I can introduce a homeomorphism of this disk to itself, homia, such that, first of all, it is the identity on the boundary. And second, it takes zero to x. And third, I would like to the x depends continuously, depends continuously on x. So here x belongs to the open disk. Well, exercise, construct such family of homeomorphisms. There are plenty of such families. Uh, uh, the only thing uh, which I need is the existence of such a family, but actually, uh, well, we, we, it is just possible to write them down. Uh, uh, to write down a particular example, and there are plenty of examples which can be written down, so it is, it is not hard to introduce such. Uh, uh, Family of 
homeomorphism dependent of a point. Uh, okay, but now, now we may replace this disk with center at zero by a disk in S with center of Q. Uh, since we, uh, we always uh, regard uh, homeomorphisms that, but, but let, let, let us even take not U, but let us take a slightly bigger disk. Uh, uh, it, it is preferable for, for me to take a bigger, a bigger disk. And uh, this disk, uh, I just identified with this disk in R2. And uh, it is uh, the topology of S doesn't matter since I always uh, extend all homeomorphisms by identity uh, to the complement. So I may think of this phi x uh, as for each point x here. I have a homeomorphism phi x from S to S, such that phi x is trivial on the complement to the open disk D2, and such that phi x takes Q to X. So, and this phi x depends continuously on x. So there is such family of homeomorphisms. Uh, now, now I just, uh, it is possible to write down this homeomorphism explicitly in the, in this direction from uh, right to, uh, from right to left. So if I have a homeomorphism psi here, this psi, uh, as psi lies here, uh, we see that it uh, psi takes P to Q. Psi of P equals Q. And, and we have a point X here and this point, the, the, this red arrow will be phi capital. Uh, this pair X psi will go under phi capital uh, to the following, uh, to the homo homeomorphism phi X composition with psi. Okay, this is a continuous map. Uh, a good exercise is to understand that the inverse is also continuous. Uh, exercise the inverse is also continuous. And it exactly provides the required homeomorphism. It exactly takes um, a homeomorphism that uh, if psi is in this pre-image, then the resultant homeomorphism takes Q to some point X in U uh, and vice versa. If uh, we have a homeomorphism which takes so the, 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 the inverse is, it can be just written. Um, well, this is a good exercise to write down a formula for the inverse and to understand that it is also continuous. So we have this homeomorphism and so this is a fiber bundle. Once we have a fiber bundle, we can write down a homotopy sequence of this the corresponding homotopy uh, sequence of homotopy groups. Uh, well, but now let us mm, and uh, well and 
the corresponding sequence will be as follows. I just write down some um, I would like to to start with uh, well, I would like to start with uh, well, well, I just just want to copy this uh, bundle. Well, um, the uh, I uh, to to write down the exact sequence. I need to choose base points. Uh, we have natural base point downstairs. We have uh, and here natural points are just identity homeomorphisms. Well, so we start with phi one of. of the fiber. Then we go to phi one of the uh, of the total space. Then we go to phi one of the base. Uh, then we go and look here. The uh, the fiber is a group, and so uh, we have here a well-defined group structure on uh, on on these two guys uh, on pi zero of these two guys, and uh, so we may. Uh, extend this uh, homotopy sequence to pi zero. Uh, here we have pi zero of, of the fiber. And here we have pi zero of, uh, of the top. Well, and uh, and here we have just one uh, since uh, uh, okay, any uh, uh, we have no group structure on this uh, below, but this is just connected components. So this is just one element. Well, uh, a good uh, a good exercise is to think through this uh, uh, and to understand that this uh, sequence actually can be extended to this by zeros. It, is, it may seem somewhat non-trivial, non but actually it is a standard fact about fiber bundles. Now, look, these groups are trivial. This is uh, nothing but, uh, well, this important fact that contractible connected component uh, that we have here uh, contractible connected components. Actually, we, no, we need only this one that it is zero. And so we get immediately the required, and these groups by zero are exactly uh, uh, mapping class groups. So we get the required sequence. Sorry. But uh, of course, uh, if we remove the boundary from the surface, this doesn't change its uh, fundamental group. So I can easily uh, replace this. So 
this is just the required Bierman sequence. And if we think of how this map, now we have a well-defined map here, those map which comes from this homotopy uh, exact sequence. But now if we uh, remind how the exact sequence of the bundle looks like, then the, this is the map from the fundamental group of the base to the to connected components of the fiber. The, this, maps, uh, this map is like that. We start from, well, we have a base, uh, base point P in the base. We have this, um, we have, uh, Chose one of the of the pre images is uh, special. It is identity, oh, and we have several pre images here. Uh, so not not several se several component connected components of pre images. Uh, it would be uh, uh, the usual situation is when we have a covering, then we have just discrete set of pre images. Here it is not discrete set of pre images, but here it is discrete set of components of pre-images. And now when we look, when we go along some curve in the uh, below, then we just write, uh, we have, we take the pre-image of this curve. We lift this curve. Uh, this is not a covering, but a fiber bundle. So the lifting is not unique, but we may lift it and we arrive to one of the connected components. And we have many liftings, but with all these liftings lead their homotopy to each other. So they lift to the same connected component. And, but look, this is a gay, this or oh, vice versa. This is gamma and this is gamma tilde. And this connected component is exactly push of gamma. Uh, this is exactly this homomorphism look is defined in this way. But now look, what is this uh, lifting of a of a loop? Lifting of a loop is just what we call pushing. It's just that we take a curve and we start deforming our homomorphism so that the initial point P travels along this loop gamma. So so so. Uh, this informal understanding of uh, our gamma is exactly in uh, in correspondence with uh, this formal definition. Okay, so we have proved the uh, we have proved uh, the Birman exact sequence. I do not stop there. Are, uh, I have already told uh, this last time that. Uh, we need to be careful that uh, actually this push uh, is not a homomorphism, but an anti-homomorphism. It uh, multiplication of um, of loops uh, comes to multiplication of mapping classes in the opposite order. And if we would like it to be a homomorphism, then we we, we need to uh, take push not along gamma, but along gamma inverse. But uh, okay, the, 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 these are, this is not so important. At least we always have such um, exact sequence. And I hope you can feel these details yourself. And also one important note, one important note, uh, ag again, I would like to leave it as, a, and as, as an exercise to understand this in details, but, uh, Mm, as an idea, this is uh, rather simple. Suppose that an element of P1 uh, can be represented by a simple closed loop. This is not uh, true for all uh, uh, for all elements of P1. So this is an assumption. Assume that an element is an element 
C here is such that it can be represented by a simple closed loop, gamma. In this situation, we can easily write down what is the uh, what is the um, element push gamma. Look, you need to take this point and to allow it to travel along this curve. It is not hard to understand that this is exactly the following. You need to take the curve close to the gamma on one side of gamma and the curve close to gamma on the other set, set, uh, side of gamma. If there was no point P, these two curves would be isotopic. But if we consider P as a puncture or as a marked point, uh, then these two curves are not isotopic if, if we do not allow to move P. So let this be gamma and delta. And, oh, no, no, so sorry, gamma is already, uh, let this be gamma plus, oh, sorry, gamma plus and gamma minus. And then uh, this is exactly, look, if we approach gamma from here, then we need to go right and then to go left. So this is, uh, I, I will write down as follows. This is this mapping class. If uh, we push a long gamma, uh, and if we would like to make this push a homomorphism, then we would push a long gamma inverse, and then this gamma plus and gamma minus, uh, will replace uh, if we make push a homomorphism. So, 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 so the, the, the sign here is up to our convention, but the uh, most important thing that uh, this is exactly the, this such a uh, product of two, uh, uh, of two then twists, one one right and the other left. Правильно я понимаю, что это упражнение в частности напрямую показывает, что push это операция корректно определенная. Нет, это упражнение никак не не показывает, что она корректно определенная, потому что это упражнение только при uh, 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 вот таком вот дополнительном предположении. Она вообще это вот для произвольной в элемента фундаментальной группы. Мы ничего сказать не можем. А, да, конечно, спасибо. Это для, для специальных элементов фундаментальной группы. Не, это, это корректная определенность, вот удобно брать вот отсюда, вот из, 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 из э, э, точной последовательности расслоения, и это правильно. А э, это показывает, это на самом деле позволяет с этим работать, позволяет этот пуш писать явно во многих случаях. Ну, потому что во многих случаях мы всегда можем петлю разложить в, в не пересекающиеся. Да? И потом уже написал. То есть это позволяет, позволяет делать явные вычисления, но никак не доказывает, что. Окей. Uh, okay. uh, this is so we have proved Birman exact sequence, and uh, the last uh, uh, thing which we would like to prove uh, is the uh, Birman uh, Lubotsky. McCarthy spectral sequence, or oh, not spectral, but exact sequence, uh, which is about the stabilizer, or, or it is called cutting exact sequence, uh, which is about the stabilizer of a multi curve. Uh, there, there are many variants of it. Uh, I have discussed it last time with uh, we may stabilize curve. Uh, 
uh, respect and its orientation or non respect not respect and orientation and so on uh, i will prove in one particular case when we respect everything uh, but uh, the proof uh, goes the same line and uh, line in all other cases as well uh, so ju ju just to avoid some um, uh, some s s complicated consideration of cases i i, ju I just uh, uh, concentrate on one particular case but the proof is the same in all other as well so uh, consider the situation when we have uh, surface S again, maybe even with punctures and boundary components, and we have a multi curve, uh, pairwise non intersecting, pairwise disjoint, and all components are pairwise non intersecting, uh, uh, simple closed curves, uh, pairwise non homotopic and uh, all components are essential. So this uh, curve is M multi-curve, uh, alpha one, alpha K. Well, for instance, uh, there is one, one, one picture or one possibility here. Okay, uh, let, let us also, uh, I, uh, it, 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 it is also possible to have separating components, so, so I just added, added to my picture. Okay, so suppose the situation is like that, then the required sequence is as follows, that we have um, the subgroup generated by the then twists about this alpha case, it lies in the stabilizer. We consider we would like to to study the stabilizer of the curve, or, uh, or the stabilizer. Oh, sorry, the stabilizer in the. Uh, I said that I would like to preserve everything, so I would like to consider pure mapping class group. In, in, in case this is only important in case is is punctures, then I. Uh, for simplicity, I would like to assume that all punctures, every puncture is fixed. And I would like to consider the stabilizer of M so that every component of M is stabilized and its orientation is uh, preserved. Uh, th this is the case I would like to consider now. All, all other are similar. And this goes to the pure mapping class group of S with M deleted, and this goes to one. Okay, let us prove this. All, all homomorphisms here, all homomorphisms are well-defined, and we only need to prove the exactness. Uh, well, uh, let us consider the following. Let us take a regular neighborhood of M, a closed, uh, no, 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 well, not, no, I would like to have open regular neighborhood so that the complement is closed. So, I would like to take, let N be an open regular neighborhood of M. We just, we just take uh, an open annulus around every alpha i. Now, nothing difficult here. Now, look, if we consider Now I would like to write down two uh, exact sequences. Uh, first of all, I may consider pure mapping class group of, of the surface S without N. Uh, well, 
this uh, all this the surfaces s without m s and s without n can be uh, disconnected. If they are not connected, then uh, the mapping class group is just by definition the direct product. The pure mapping class group is the, the direct product of the pure mapping class group uh, groups of the components. Since uh, the pure mapping class group must preserve every component and every puncture in it, so we uh, the, uh, it is uh, not, not, nothing uh, bad with uh, uh, with using. Uh, uh, non disconnected surfaces here. Uh, I will would like to write the capping spectral sequence, but I would like to uh, write them uh, in um, well uh, in the vertical direction. Look, if we cap s this uh, the, well the, this uh, s without n has boundary component. For each alpha, we have two boundary component, components bounding the corresponding annulus. Let us denote them by, by, well, this was alpha five, so these are alpha five plus and alpha five minus, and the same for all others. This is, uh, it is not important for me which, which one is, plus and which is minus just in any order. Uh, well, and look, the surface S without M is obtained by capping all components alpha one plus minus, and so on alpha k plus minus from s without n. Indeed, s without n has a, the, a boundary component alpha five minus, and s without m has a puncture on this uh, instead of this boundary component. If we just delete alpha five, then we, we get a puncture here. So this is exactly capping. So we have the capping exact sequence, and the this capping exact sequence is like that. This goes to one. Here we have, uh, and here we have the free abelian group generated by all dent twists about this boundary component. So here we have two k dent twists. Mm. Okay, and here we have one. So we have this, this is the capping exact sequence. Now, now uh, in the horizontal direction, I would like to uh, write down another spectra, another exact sequence. Uh, look, mm, Here we have a mapping to the stabilizer of M in the pure mapping class group of S. Well, indeed, this is just extension by one by the identity. If we have uh, well, I just, uh, I would like to, to take it like that. It is more convenient to me to have this picture here. Uh, so if we have a a mapping class of S without N. And so, so we have a homomorphism of S without N onto itself, which is identity on every of alpha I plus or minus, then we can extend by the identity to these cylinders. It is important that we could not do this 
on the on the level of uh, s with uh, without m but uh, uh, this s without n is a closed surface and we can extend this this by the identity and uh, mm, but in in fact look here we have we have a closed s without n is a closed subsurface closed subsurface of s so we may write down the including exact sequence which we started from uh, uh, we, we started from it today these uh, exact sequences as follows we have here as the uh, as the kernel of this extension by the identity uh, we have here mm, uh, in this situation, uh, we have no, uh, well, uh, the, the, the complement of S with respect to S without N, the complement is exactly N itself, and it consists of open angular. So in this case, we have no uh, one puncture disks, we have only angular. And so here we have uh, the, uh, we the kernel is the uh, free abelian group generated by such elements. But by such products of twists. And this is exact. We have already proved this. Well, and but now, now this is again part which doesn't come from uh, uh, the uh, inclusion spec, uh, inclusion exact sequence, but this is surjective. Well, the matter is uh, okay, we have already discussed it last time uh, when we have a homeomorphism which fixes, uh, which fixes a curve preserving its orientation, then we can always make an isotopy so that it fixes this curve point-wise and moreover it fixes some small neighborhood of this po uh, curve point-wise. So we have, this is not a home market, but we have a possibility to construct a pre-image. It, it is not canonical, so this is a not, a, not a homeomorphism, but uh, we, we can construct pre-image, so, so this is surjective. Well, okay, now look on this. Mm, mm. Now look on this sequence, and well, of course, our mapping from here to here uh, commutes with these two. If we have homeomorphism of homeomorphism of S without this regular neighborhood, then we can restrict it to, uh, not restrict, uh, we, we, uh, the, the, this one is extended by the identity. Yes, extended by the identity. So this vertical arrow, arrow is just extended by the identity and this is extended by the identity to larger surface and then restricting. So of course they commute. So we have such commutative diagram and look, look uh, this group is of course, uh, this group is of course subgroup of that group. And so now it is purely uh, algebraic, uh, algebraic fact that from here it follows that, uh, well, uh, Look, look, this stabilizer, oh, let us start from this. This group is obtained from this pure mapping class group by taking quotient by such abelian group. That group is obtained from this group by taking quotient by those abelian group, which is smaller. 
So of course, this group is obtained from that group by additional factorization, by additional taking quotient, by, um, by all which rests of this group after taking quotient by that group. So we immediately obtain what we need. Uh, in, in this group, there is no difference between alpha pluses and alpha minuses. Here they are the same. So uh, they just, we, we get the sequence like that. Okay, and this finishes the uh, proof. Well, mm, now, well, now let us come. We have proved all these useful exact sequences. Mm. Uh, the, our next topic. Uh, is uh, the um, proof, uh, the find an explicit set of generators for the mapping class group. Uh, and uh, we would like to prove theorem by Humphreys. Uh, that uh, the mapping class group of um, of a closed surface is generated uh, by the following 2g plus 1 then twists. Uh, and these twists are as following uh, as follows. Yes, the standard notation here is this one A1, this A2, A3, A4. Uh, this, uh, uh, well, I would like to put dots and here is AG. Uh, here we have such curves which are called C1, C2, and well, the, the last one is CG minus one. There are G minus one of them. And here we, do, we take curves which um, stand, which are sternly denoted by M1 and M2. So the claim is that these, the dent twists about these particular set of, uh, of curves generate TM1, TM2, uh, TC1, TC2. Oh, so, sorry, sorry, uh, I would like here to start with. Oh, 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 okay, TM1, TM2, all alphas and all, all, all I's, us and uh, all C curves. Okay, that they generate the whole map plus group. Uh, similar result uh, exists for uh, mapping class group with punctures. Uh, just uh, uh, I don't want to step on uh, to, uh, um, to spend time for, for, for them. Uh, and in fact, in fact, uh, okay, um, in this form, this is theorem by Humphreys. Uh, in fact, um, the theorem was mostly proved by Le Corish. Uh, uh, previously known result by Le Corish uh, was that uh, we need to take here, oh, sorry. Uh, this M1 is, uh, can be uh, drawn, uh, drawn here, 
the thesis why why they are uh, denoted by the same letters, uh, but uh, it is just two possibilities. But we can also add all others M3, M4, etc. And the last one is Mg. And theorem by Likoresh was that uh, uh, was that uh, um, these three G uh, minus one uh, then twists generate uh, the whole mapping class group. Yes, uh, 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 let us. Uh, if I get to say one thing that here G greater than or equal to two, here G greater than or equal to one. Uh, well, uh -huh. And uh, actually uh, theorem by Humphreys is just uh, obtained from here by uh, explaining how these MIs can be written from uh, from uh, so they can be expressed from these to G plus one then twists uh, and actually this uh, historically this topic comes uh, comes back to goes back to Dan uh, who first proved that um, uh, the mapping class group is generated by finitely many dent twists, but without pointing out a particular set of generators. But there are, there are such simple sets of generators. And let us, uh, let us start with, uh, it is more convenient to prove Likoresh's theorem that these uh, generators are enough. And even more, I would prefer to introduce additional uh, generators here. I would like to consider M2 prime here, M3 prime here, and etc. Uh, it is not uh, for M1 and Mg, they are the same, but uh, for, for uh, two, three, and so on, they are differ different. And, um, the proof would be in two parts. First of all, we will prove that the mapping class group is generated by twists about all I's, all A's, all C's, all M's and all M primes. So, oh, so sorry, here from two to G minus one. So here we have G plus G minus one plus G plus G minus two. So we have four G minus three elements. So the first, uh, first part is that this mapping class group is generated by these elements. This is first part. And the second in ingredient is that uh, all these extra then twists, all these primes and all TM3, TMG can be expressed uh, through through all others, through A's, C's, and the first two M's. Okay, so there are two parts of the proof and we start from the second one. Uh, 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 let, us, uh, uh, let us discuss how to express 
So this is the point when it is crucial to look to my lists. It's of course, I don't remember all particular formulas. Sorry, where are them? Ah. Okay, okay, yeah. Well, let us uh, start from part two. So well, we are going to to write Well, first let us show how to express mi prime from uh, so how to express twists about uh, mi primes uh, through twists about a, A's, about C's, and about M's. Uh, it is rather easy. Mm, I recall that uh, we have chain relations. If we have a chain, that is a sequence of simple closed curve so that they intersect uh, the consecutive curve have exactly one point of intersection and non-consecutive curves are disjoint. And if, the, if this chain is odd, consists of odd number of curves, then the regular neighborhood of this chain has two boundary components, which are homologous to each other. And we have a chain relation. In, let us consider a particular chain. Let us start with M1, then A1, then C1, A2, C2, etc., and so on up to AK, CK. This is a 2K plus one chain. Uh, well, um, this chain, uh, well, look on the case k equals four. One, two, three, four, five. And the regular neighborhood of this chain, if we did remove this chain, then the, its boundary components are isotopic to these two curves, M3 and M3 prime. And the chain relation is as follows, that if we take all these, Mm. twists about uh, curves act, uh, mm, entering this chain. And we need to put it into to the power. We need to take the order of the chain and plus one. So here the power is 2K plus two. Then we get the product of 10 twists about uh, the corresponding to curves. Here is prime. Well, okay. So we can express this one from then tweets about curves without primes. So this one is done. This is A. Now we may forget about uh, about mi primes, and we may look on uh, on every um, on these mi's. Let us uh, consider the following situation. Let us consider three consecutive handles here. 
so what we are interested in is the following part of the surface. So we look on certain three consecutive handles. So here is M i, M i plus one, and M i plus two. And, uh, mm, and here we also have, this one is C i, this one is C i plus one, and we have also this A's, A i, A i plus one, and A i plus two. Well, so the claim is claim. Is that the Dan twist about uh, I, this M I plus two can be expressed through all others, these curves. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven curves. Through then twist of these particular A curves of these three particular of CI and CI plus one and of MI and MI plus one. Well, and uh, well, let us do it. Actually, um, uh, well, to do set, to do things like that, um, actually, it is convenient to understand one important thing. How does a simple closed curve changes? Well, uh, let us consider such situation that there are two simple closed curves, A and B, which have a single point of intersection. And then it is not hard to, to draw TB of A. Mm, well, we need, we just need to, um, we just need to, uh, to do like that. Uh, we, we, uh, we, we, sorry. We need to go left as we approach B and hence uh, the result, uh, sorry, let us take some. The result is like that. So it is not uh, hard to draw it as here. Well, and now look, uh, assume that we take the curve MI and to this curve, I would like to, I would like to, apply the dent twist AI to MI. What is the result? The result, I, I, I don't want to draw it. Uh, I just would like to show it. It is the curve like that. Yes. This curve intersects CI once. Now let us so this, this this curve more or less more or less more or less it goes around this chain M I A I. It goes here here it intersects and goes from 
So yes, the interpretation of this one is that we go around this chain from the left in the most, uh, in this point we cross B and then we return from another side along this chain AB. But now let us apply CI here. This means that we go around the total chain of three curves here we cross it and we return along this chain of three curves on the opposite side. And, by, and mm, in the same way, if we uh, write here, what I want to write here, uh, I want to write here next a i plus one. This is still the chain. And then I would like to write M I I plus one. This is four chain M I A I C I A I plus one M I plus one. This is a chain, and if we uh, apply these then twists, then we get a curve which goes on the left side from this chain till the very end. Here it crosses and then it returns on the right hand side of this chain. So the claim is that this is exactly this blue curve, this epsilon. Uh, uh, it is a good exercise to do it with all details to draw one up another all these curves and understand that it is exactly this epsilon. Okay, now maybe a less trivial part that to this epsilon, I would like Oh, it doesn't work. All right. I would like to copy it, but doesn't one. Okay, now to this epsilon, I would like further to apply the following chain of uh, TC I plus one, TA I plus two, uh, yes. Assume that we apply these two to epsilon. Look again, epsilon, TCI plus one and AI plus two, this is again a chain. And the result will be as follows. We go here, we turn left and go around it. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry, we need to cross uh, the last. Sorry, let, 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 let us do it by, by step. I'm, 
I slightly forget what is happening here. Well, first, if we apply this one, then we go here, we turn left around CI plus one, and we Ah, well, and we return like that. Well, okay, this is uh, uh, the result of this first. And now we would like to apply this dent twist. And the result is this violet curve. When we go around this, turn left, then go there. Okay, okay, we get, so th this, this one is the following curve. I, I will uh, write, it, uh, write it down here, uh, draw it here. Uh, finally, we get the following curve. We go like that, and then go like that. Fine, uh, now I would like to apply here T A I plus one and T C I plus one once more. So um, if we apply here, so, 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 so uh, this is T A I plus two. Yes. The, now we would like to apply here T A I plus one. Uh, this is this one, uh, and we get again. We go left, and the result is uh, the curve which goes like that. And now, once more, we would like to apply T C. I plus two, this TCI plus two is this one, this curve. And uh, so uh, the result is like that, that uh, here we, I would like to draw it here by blue. So when we, we are going around this curve, we go that side and we go left, but it is on invisible side. So we go right. <laughs> In fact, and uh, then we do like that. And it is easy to see that it is exactly, we do not, now we can uh, remove this, uh, this, um, uh, par portions of curve which are on the invisible side, and actually we need we get the following. So finally, uh, if you didn't follow my hands, then uh, just uh, please check it yourself that this curve, this curve. is exactly this lambda, which is written here. But well, but now uh, let us recall that epsilon is this one, yes? So so we see the following. That if we apply If we apply all these eight then twists to the curve MI, yes, then we get lambda. I recall that MI is here. And in this list, 
in this list. We do not have no MI and no MI plus two, only other for five curves. So look, there is symmetry of this picture. This is symmetry about such plane. There is symmetry, which takes lambda to itself and it takes uh, mi to mi plus two and vice versa. This symmetry is orientation reversal. So it takes left then twists to right then twists and vice versa. So if we apply this symmetry, uh, yes, this symmetry get, gets ci plus one and it also swaps ci plus one and ci and it swaps uh, ai plus two and ai and it fixes ai plus one. So if we write down this, then we get and all the right then twists go to left. So we always get inverse. So if we, after this, this symmetry, we have the following. If we apply this to m i plus two, then we get the same lambda. Yes. So now looking together, I'm I'm uh, with minus ones. This turns out to be much longer. If we go, if we look on this and this uh, formulae, then the result is that uh, I don't want to write it down explicitly product of 16 then twists, but these are only then twists. This is this element uh, multiplied by the inverse of this element. Uh, so this uh, product of 16 then twists, but here only AI, AI plus one, AI plus two, ci ci plus one and mi plus one only these six curves enter here and it takes mi to mi plus two so the corresponding then twist is uh, conjugate so if if this product of then twists uh, if it is tau then this uh, t mi plus two is tau t mi tau inverse. And so it is written from uh, the then twists about mi, these three curves, these two curves, and mi I plus two, n plus one. So applying this uh, several times, we express mg, then mg minus one, and so on, m3, but we cannot express m m2, and we arrive exactly to this Humphreys set of generators. So what I have shown, I have shown this second part. It is easier part. Uh, I have shown that all licorice generators and even also these M primes are expressed through these Humphreys generators. So it is enough to show that these then twists, these uh, four G minus three then twists generate the whole mapping class group. And we do this next time. And this proof is a very nice combination of curve complex and all things concerning it and of uh, Birman and Birman uh, McCarthy, uh, Birman Lubotsky McCarthy exact sequences. Well, so this will be next time. Uh, I think that, well, today it's 10th of December. Maybe we, uh, first of all, 
during this weekend i i will i hope i will send you uh, problems for uh, tasks for the exam and uh, also uh, to those who wrote me to one of my addresses uh if if you didn't do this uh, please uh, write me and i will send you problems and uh, uh definitely we will have next lecture on 7, 17th concerning 24th uh, we will we, we'll see it depends on what we uh, what uh, well uh, what is in the next lecture well so now let's stop and if any questions please ask me про комплексные структуры мы поговорить не успеваем да получается ну да что-то мы про много не успели поговорить я хотел гораздо больше успеть вот, ну как-то вот да, в общем, к сожалению, не успеваем.